District 4. This is uh, your commissioner, Caroline Sanders. And I am reaching out to you for the second of our conversations with Commissioner Sanders. I uh, have the pleasure of introducing and allowing the sharing of information from Mark Breckenridge. I have met him before, but I was in a training with him for the second time. But he shared some information in that training that piqued my interest and I thought would be of interest to you as well. So um, we invited him to join us and be our second guest um, in this series. So uh, enough about me. Mark, if you would like to let us know. I So I, I have a note that you are the manager and you need to tell me what does PIO mean of Huron Valley Ambulance? Public information officer. That's a term that's used across the country for the person that is the information sharing agent for public safety agencies. Okay, so we have one of those. I just I'm not used to looking at that uh, that initial. So, um, Mark, you um, were sharing some information about an upcoming millage renewal. Let me stress renewal, not brand new something we've always, we've not always had, but we've had. And I'd like for you to, sh I thought it was very interesting, bragging rights worthy. And so if you would please take over and tell us more, give us a little bit of information about yourself and then you can uh, launch into your presentation if you'd like. Okay, so I need to uh, share my slideshow again, and um, I'm looking for the buttons. They seem to have disappeared. Hang on just a minute. So, um, uh, here's a slideshow that I put together for the presentation today. Um, I tried not to be uh, too far into the weeds about the technology because uh, that's kind of the world that, uh, that, I, that I come from. So when I started my public safety career, it was uh, back in EMS. Uh, I was a paramedic, and after a few years, I was assigned to be in charge of all of the EMS uh, communications technology back in 1980-something, back in the day. Um, and, uh, and so I embraced that. It was uh, still relatively new technology. Yes, we had radios, and we were just getting our feet wet with computers, and, uh, and received and, and set up our first, what's called a CAD, a computer-aided dispatching system. So that was a computer that instead of using paper cards where you would track all of the emergency runs, that's what we did for many, many, many years. The computer took on that responsibility and was able to timestamp uh, your, uh, your uh, dispatch time and how long it took to get to the scene and then how long you were on the scene and and uh, all kinds of other information that went along with that run. And then you batched it and that became a searchable record. And so we were really excited about that at the time. Of course, today it's, a, it's just so much more uh, information is collected and put into what we would call a CAD. Uh, and everybody has a CAD, all the dispatch centers have it. And we have even more technologies beyond that. Um, but that's what I sort of got my feet wet with. And then I came to Washtenaw County in uh, 1992. I was uh, Director of Emergency Management and Homeland Security, and I did that for 25 years. And then dispatch uh, was added to my billet. And so I took on a whole bunch of technologies in that role. And then I finally retired um, uh, from, the, from the county and, uh, and came back to HVA where we're using a lot of technology. And I stayed involved in the in the, what we call the, the Project Oversight Committee. That's the, the committee that, that oversees the millage operations, what we spend the money on, uh, uh, how uh, we establish our replacement schedule. And so I've really kept up on this stuff throughout the years, but I wanted to make sure this presentation wasn't too far into the technology side and instead, uh, was focused mainly on what the purpose of the millage uh, is and uh, why it's so important to our county. And so, Commissioner, you're right. Uh, we are the uh, only county in the state that has an emergency communications technology millage. There's a really good reason for that. I can go into that just a little bit. But other counties have public safety millages. We have a public safety and human services or, or uh, um 
I believe it's a, uh, a mental health and public safety millage that's separate from this. And we've got many other millages that are out there. Many of them are just little millages like this one, um, but they're designed to resolve a specific problem. And I'll go into that in, uh, in just a minute. The, the voters have been really supportive of this down through the years. So uh, my agenda today will be to just talk a little bit about the background, why we created the millage, uh, some information about the millage itself, uh, some of the details and the, and the nitty gritty, if you will, what we've accomplished using this uh, re relatively small millage that is uh, frequently uh, overlooked, but is really important to public safety and then why sustaining our investment is just so important. So uh, that's what we'll talk about today and then I'll come back and we'll see if you have any questions. Okay, the background. So for many, many years, public safety personnel from other agencies could not talk to each other. And, and it, it was creating a lot of uh, coordination problems. In public safety, you have essentially police, fire, and EMS all responding to emergencies at the same time. And frequently, they are the same emergencies. But to give you an example, Ann Arbor Police was on one radio system. The Sheriff's Department was on another radio system. The State Police was on another radio system. The fire departments were on another radio system. And EMS was on another radio system. And there's a lot of reasons for that that a level of, of discreteness, if I can use that word. It's because that um, uh, technology back then, even though it was much simpler than it is today, really uh, was still quite expensive for public safety agencies. And there were different uh, technical requirements for all of those agencies for communications. And so they basically uh, stovepiped, they siloed, they liked what they had. They decided to stick with it and maintain what they had because it was cheaper just to maintain the current technology they were using. Um, and so it was impossible on, for instance, a car chase. If there is a known murder and is fleeing the scene uh, after shooting someone and we get a vehicle description, then it was so hard to track that, that uh, fleeing felon uh, because as I said, everyone was on a different radio system. And so if you were a police officer and you took chase after someone that just killed your mom or your dad or your neighbor, and we knew who it was that we were looking for, uh, the problem was that the car that would receive that call would be given information about that assailant and might even come into contact with or see that fleeing vehicle and take chase. Now, every time that the location changed to that vehicle while they were pursuing um, that felon, that information would have to go back in the day to a dispatcher who then had to call another dispatcher from the next police department over who would then relay it to their cars. And then if it went on the highway, then that dispatcher would have to call again to the state police dispatcher who would then relay information to the cars. It was very slow, very cumbersome, and a lot of information because of um, it, how information sharing works under pressure is, uh, a lot of information was lost. And so that was frustrating. And then you had calls like um, uh, fire departments and EMS, ambulances respond a lot to the same kinds of calls. Um, ambulances often back up fire departments on fire calls so that there was somebody there to stand by in case there was somebody inside a house that was pulled out and, and had been burned or, or had smoke inhalation so that they could be treated quickly. Um, or if a firefighter was injured in the line of duty inside a burning structure that might have collapsed. And so we would stand by uh, and provide medical assistance for uh, any firefighters that might get hurt. And so as fires like that, situations like that occurred time and time and time again, and as these incidents became bigger and more complicated because our buildings got bigger, there, there are more complicated structures with technologies and laboratories and factories, and it just became really important for EMS and fire to have the ability to communicate on uh, an incident uh, as it was developing in real time. So there's another example. And I could go on and on, but the point was that um, the communities had to, had to belly up and pay for any radio communications, any 911 systems that were installed or replaced 
or upgraded and it was very expensive and it kept getting more and more and more expensive down through the years. So uh, after oh many years of this sort of patchwork of a communication system that wasn't really all that good for the citizens, but it was all we had at the time and it was all we could afford, um, we realized um, if you look at the bottom of this slide, two massive game changers on the horizon. We saw the MPSCS, that's the statewide 800 megahertz radio system, get rolled out and slowly and surely uh, individual departments, agencies, responders would be joining that system, but it needed to um, ha have better range and coverage for uh, the entire state. It was just a, a basic, a backbone system that was installed, but we saw that coming and the possibilities were really, uh, uh, the, the benefits were really pretty good. Uh, if we could just build that system out further. And then we knew that next generation 911 was coming. The original uh, 911 system was based on copper wires. And we all remember, well, some of us maybe don't remember having to pick up the phone and rotary dial 911. And that was the 911 system. It stayed that way. You could use touch tone, DTMF, it's called a uh, dual tone multi-frequency. So you could go beep, 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 and it would dial 911. But that was really the only, you know, significant change that uh, that we could do to 911 with one exception. And that was we were able to reference the telephone database when a 911 call was made so that we could see the caller's telephone number and address based on the telephone billing records. And that development was a big shot in the arm for dispatchers that could help them better understand the nature of emergency, where it is, how to call back if the line was, uh, if the call was dropped um, in order to maintain communications with someone that might be calling for medical help or because of uh, a crime in progress. And so that was great. And that eventually became caller ID. So that was about the limit of what we could do with the old 911 system. Meanwhile, you had wi wireless smartphones, cell phones uh, that were just taking off like wildfire. Everybody seemed to be abandoning their copper line, their what we called POTS, plain old telephone service, and going for cellular wireless uh, communications. And that was great, except that implementing that next generation technology the technology in our 911 centers that could process a text message or that could accept uh, a photograph of, of perhaps uh, an assailant, a criminal, or uh, the picture of a fleeing vehicle, or um, uh, the ability to accept a, a movie uh, of some transaction that took place. Those were all next generation 911 calls that our old copper line telephone system could not manage. We saw that the next generation was coming too. It had to because everyone was going to wireless. And here we were on 911, basically with old style copper wire technology. So I said all that to basically highlight that where we were was in a very challenging place. We had operational problems. We couldn't intercommunicate. Um, we had uh, um, the need for, over time, install mobile data terminals in cars. Computer-aided dispatch systems were getting more complicated and more expensive. Um, all the data transfer pipelines that needed to take place couldn't happen over copper. They had to be fiber or what we call microwave through the air from point to point. Um, and there were all kinds of other technologies that were coming that our local governments just couldn't afford. We knew it. Every time we'd go to a local administrator or to the mayor or to uh, you know, a township supervisor and, and, and whatever the agency it was, you were police, fire, EMS, there was always that, boy, that is getting expensive, uh, but I guess we have to buy it. Um, and so the pressure was on to fund while faced with budget shortfalls and other really important community projects that local officials were trying to fund. And so we were in competition with the human service 
uh, components of a, of a budget or the homelessness budget or the healthcare budget or um, any number of things. And we really felt uncomfortable constantly coming to local units of government and having to ask for more money to fund a system that uh, was, to, to put it lightly, on its last leg. And, and um, the technology that we had in place, we were patchworking, we were buying used parts for and from other parts of the country and having them in a box ready to go in case the 911 switch broke down, we could put a new part in. Um, and there were um, a lot of challenges uh, in maintaining a system that was, you know, really aging and was reaching its end of life both on the radio side and on the 911 side. And so that's where the idea for a millage came from. So what we uh, uh, decided to do was we brought all the public safety officials together uh, from the county and um, many administrators and elected officials. And we developed a system uh, where uh, we could fund the radio and the 911 and other communications technologies for public safety um, uh, out of a, a millage over a 10-year period, and we were able to fiscally plan for a need for no more than 0.2 mills over 10 years. That's a pretty small millage, but what it uh, does is it creates about $4 million annually. Uh, it equates to $20 a year for a resident with a home valued at $200,000. That's about a buck 67 a month. And of course it varies depending on equalization changes. But um, the first millage request passed on May 8, 2006 at 62.25%. And then uh, over 10 years, we implemented systems and technologies. We started bringing the radio side, especially the radio side up to uh, snuff. Um, and that, that was a massive undertaking. Um, I'll talk more about that in just a minute, but um, we knew that the 911 side of the equation still had to be addressed, but over that 10-year period, we really expanded the MPSES, the state's communication system, in Washtenaw County so that it could be used by police, fire, and EMS, and that that system could be shared with uh, uh, sharing of communications happening seamlessly. And so we came back um, on March 8, 2016, with another request for 10 years so that we could start, well, so that we could maintain what we, what we put in place and so that we could expand the, the, the replacement uh, efforts of our old 911 system. And that passed at 75.84%. Um, so, um, and that's where we are basically today is that that now will run out um, in 2026 and the administration uh, and county leadership said, let's go ahead and get this on the uh, ballot for a renewal a little ahead of schedule uh, because now we have both a new and advanced 800 megahertz radio system for all public safety officials and now a next generation 911 system that is up and fully functional and, and ready to be updated to, to handle new technologies that, that uh, come down the path, which is happening all the time. We want to be able to, to uh, expand our 911 system with next generation uh, capability so that we can add those developments, uh, those enhancements as they happen. And now we have to maintain that and think about a replacement schedule. Because once you buy it and you put it in place, anybody that knows about technology, there's an end of life. There's a usable lifespan for all of that technology and it has to be replaced. So since its inception, we've installed, of the, of the uh, millage, we've installed seven really impressive radio towers around the county. Uh, and that utilizes that new infrastructure that I told you about, the statewide communication system. We have uh, installed 700 mobile radios in all of the emergency response vehicles in the county. Uh, and now every public safety official, police, fire, EMS, uh, has a handheld portable radio issued to them. Um, and we've updated the radio dispatching and next generation 911 consoles in all of our key centers. So at Washington Metro Dispatch, 
at uh, Huron Valley Ambulances uh, Fire and EMS Dispatch Center, out at Chelsea PD, U of M PD, uh, and uh, public, uh, was it DPSS, Department of Public Safety and Security, and at EMU uh, uh, Police Department, all of the technology that they have for both radios and telephonics are cutting edge, and we are training them, we maintain them, and we manage the system that they that supports their uh, emergency communications needs. And nothing has really been um, uh, more of a of a uh, shining example of just how well, especially the radio technology has been working, than the Dexter tornado back in 2012. I was the warning operator in the county emergency operations center that day. We saw it coming. Uh, we were uh, triggering the outdoor warning sirens, sending out the text messages, alerting all the public safety officials, and and it was a, a major multi-agency response into Dexter to make sure that everybody made it out of that tornado that hit the village of Dexter, then it was a village, that they made it out alive. And it was very successful. Multiple agencies, no injuries, no lives were lost. Uh, and then not long uh, after that, we had a really major uh, multiple vehicle crash on US 23 in the winter. So get ready for that. Snow bands, right? Bands of snow that came off of Lake Michigan. And it was just creating these sudden blinding whiteout conditions on US 23. Uh, and within minutes, the freeway turned to just a, sh a sheet of ice. And cars were piling up, crashing into each other. Semi-tractors were, were jackknifing. Uh, it, it was a terrible, terrible mess. The radio communication system providing interoperability. So the police, fire, EMS, we had the road commission plugged in. Um, we brought in AATA buses so that uh, people that we rescued that didn't need medical attention would have a warm place to stay in the middle of this whiteout. Uh, and the, it just performed just beautifully. What a godsend it was. So really for every snowstorm, every ice storm, every severe storm that causes, you know, the, 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 the down trees and power lines and the flooding, um, uh, this radio system is just golden. And don't forget about all of our, our special events, uh, the big ones and the small ones, from the Manchester chicken broil to, you know, the, the big house. Uh, that radio system provides excellent communications between police, fire, EMS, multiple agencies, including FBI, state police. Uh, last weekend with um, uh, the uh, vice presidential candidate who came in from Minnesota to see his uh, team play, we had the Secret Service plugged in and involved. Um, and it just works so much better than it did back in the old days. And, and we have to maintain that. It's so important for public safety because it helps them to provide the kind of world-class service, if I can use that term, but it's really true, world-class world service for our citizens, for our constituents, for the people that need us the most. So now we have all public safety on the same radio system that can talk to one another, regardless of the jurisdiction. Uh, the uh, new communication system impacts every Washtenaw County resident, including, by the way, 70,000 or more commuters that travel through our county every single day. We have a lot of transition from one end of the county to our other, and crashes happen and medical emergencies happen. Uh, the communications during big events and small events, too. And uh, best of all, what's really great about this millage is that the individual cities and the townships and the county, they don't have to pay for the system out of the general fund budget so that they can use those revenues to pay for the really important things that, um, that their communities have identified as important to them. And technology, if it was just a small ask every once in a while, wouldn't be a big deal to fund out of general fund budgets, but as we all know, we all have to pay for technology costs uh, if we want to stay plugged in to the rest of the world. Internet, computers, uh, uh, connectivity, um, Wi-Fi, all that stuff costs money. The emergency communication stuff is just like that. But think about the scope of that technology. It needs to work 
for about 300,000 people seamlessly, flawlessly every day. And uh, so as I'm uh, 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 closing my presentation here, hey, the high technology requires constant maintenance. We have part-time personnel that are doing just that and coordinating it with the state and other surrounding counties to make sure that we have interoperability, the ability to communicate between us, not just within our own county, between our own public safety providers, but also uh, with other counties and state and federal agencies. We've got to keep ahead of obsolescence. If we don't, then that'll just put us right back to where we were and putting a patchwork over uh, old technology and trying to put it on life, life support and hopefully it'll, it'll work when the next storm comes and then the system crashes, that's not good for anybody. Uh, we wanna stay ahead of the replacement schedules too and be very mindful of the technological end of life. Uh, portable and mo mobile radios, they require replacement every five to 10 years, depending on how heavily they're used. And the uh, firefighters, uh, they really use their portable radios and the, and the police officers too. Uh, they're really taking a beating out there. Uh, medics, not so much, but still that's a five to 10 year window for replacement. And a lot of the infrastructure, the base station radios and the microwave links and the routers and all that stuff, that's got to re be replaced at least every eight to 10 years. And we've tried kicking that can down the road before and push it out to 14 and 15 years. And it was not pretty and everybody was on edge about its survivability. So without a millage, these expenses would all revert to general fund budgets of our local units of government. And none of us in public safety want to see that happen because we know the challenges that our local officials have. This way we can put forward a proposal to everyone in Washtenaw County, ask them to fund something that benefits public safety officials and them in the end, and get it out of the, the, the budget debate that happens every year uh, when uh, 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 fiscal uh, budgets are, are now more of a challenge than ever uh, in our communities. So let me just say thank you for giving me the opportunity, Commissioner. Um, here's a list of all the agencies. This is every public safety agency in Washtenaw County, and it doesn't include our federal and many of our other state institutions that are plugged in so that when we have a, a critical incident, a, a, a college might catch fire and need to evacuate or, or you know, a hospital might have a problem that needs to evacuate or might have an active shooter. These are all the agencies that are on the system ready to go right now. 911 centers receive the call with the newest technology, the best technology available and our radio system supports all, these, all of these agencies so that the response can be as effective as possible. And that's uh, what I have for you. Well, that was chock full and excellent information. I appreciate that. I wanna ask if, if you are able to share this PowerPoint with Ashley so that we could link this to the recording um, in case people wanted to go through it. If not, if there are things in here that are, you know, like uh, security related, I would understand that, but I'll put that out there. And then sure. um, I, I had two questions for you. So one is, so this is, this comes out to be about a $4 million um, budget annually, correct? Based on the millage. Yes. Would you say that that cost is less than what it would have continued to cost for all of those municipalities that would have had to buy or you know utilize their general funds? I'm guessing the answer is absolutely yes. This is far less, but I you know I would like to ask someone that knows you know to better inform our constituents. Like this is a it's kind of a bargain. So to answer your question and, and, and correct me if I don't, you know, nail this, um, but um, the radio and the 911 technologies that local governments would need to pay for without this millage have increased in their cost, not just at the cost of living, but the cost of technology is much higher than it has been because this is pretty high tech stuff. It's got to be really dependable. It's got to work every time. And we've got to be able to do a lot 
with the information that would that we get and so you have to make sure that the connectivity works and that uh that the radio has good coverage for uh the the public safety personnel that gets sent into like heavy dense buildings and that sort of thing and so the um the the, the cost has actually increased somewhat for the millage over the last 20 years because of the cost of technology. And we have reduced that old style cost to local units of government, the old VHF or, or low band UHF radios, the old style radios and the wire line, copper line 911 circuits. Um, and so th those costs no longer are feasible. I mean, you can't, you can't buy a copper line 911 switch anymore. That just doesn't happen. Uh, so you can't even get that technology. You have to pay more for the new technology. So if we didn't have the millage, would they be straddled with that expense? Yeah. Yeah, it's one of the reasons why, and I, I'll add this point, um, during my tenure with Washtenaw County, we had multiple local units of government coming to us and saying, while I was in the sheriff's department, saying, we can't afford the technology expenses of our 911 center anymore. We know this new technology is coming. Can we consolidate everything and start putting, you know, all of our, if you will, eggs in one basket and share the technology so it's not as expensive? And so what we actually wound up doing was consolidating Ann Arbor, the state police, Ypsilanti police, and the sheriff's department all into one center, thereby saving local units dollars, and then implement the millage to help pay for those expenses, offsetting a lot of those expenses. And now at Metro Dispatch, basically the entire county, with the exception of a few dispatch centers like U of M and EMU, college dispatch centers, they have a very special function there on college campuses with those exceptions and just a, just a handful of others. Um, now we can put our, our, our technology to work in a more combined effort and then support the fire and EMS dispatch center at Ann Arbor uh, for, uh, for uh, Washtenaw County, which is Huron Valley Ambulance on State Circle. So now we only really have two main centers that we have to support this high technology at and a few others, like I said, smaller centers. But now that does help improve your economies of scale. Because now the individual dispatch centers like Ypsilanti, who was back in the 2010s looking at a phone switch that needed to be replaced, and that would have cost the city $450,000. Can you imagine that? Mm -hmm. During an economic crisis, mm -hmm. a city having to pay that kind of money just to stay live on 911, mm -hmm. it just wasn't feasible. And so we were using now economies of scale through consolidation and the benefits of having a coordinated technology millage that could offset all of those local government costs and make it more manageable. Does that answer your question? It does. It does. And um, I, I, I didn't share this with you earlier, but ironically, I left your training, had to change my clothes and go to an event in Detroit, and then had a family member who had a medical emergency here in my driveway in Washtenaw County. And I needed to call 911 and let Wayne County know that I needed to be transferred to Washtenaw County 911 so that they could dispatch an ambulance. It was a process. It went relatively smoothly, but I did have to call Wayne twice. And so I, so I literally were you left on your cell phone? Left you on that cell emergency phone? training. And yeah. Mm -hmm. And Thank goodness. Yes. Thank goodness. My cell phone had some signal. That's yeah. a whole thing, thing right there. Um, but I, I, you know, nothing happens by happenstance, but I thought I just walked out of this emergency training. Uh, yeah, so that, there's one utilize some of the things. There's one opportunity for us and we're still really working on it. And that's the cellular 911 routing of calls. So that's a whole thing. Uh, if you live near Wayne County, you could hit a Wayne County tire uh, tower. And so that call now goes to Wayne, uh, Wayne County, right? Mm -hmm. 
And so that still has to be addressed. And we are always looking at opportunities with the cell phone companies to make that better. Always. <laughs> well, if there's anything I can do to help you with that, I would, because I was, uh, up until two years ago, one of the last dinosaurs that refused to get rid of my landline mm -hmm. because I have younger people in my household and mm -hmm. I needed to make sure in an emergency they weren't running around with their cell phone trying to catch a signal that, you know, the, the landlines, they know exactly where you are. That's not so much the case with mobile. And so I think that's critical as a next need, my personal opinion. Um, it's, it's not a, it's not something fluffy because they are, you know, de-investing from landlines. Um, and people have been relying on their cell phones for a decade now, literally it's time to, to get that part updated before we have something major now. Yes. And that, and that is being looked at, uh, the, uh, the, the next step in the evolution of wireless 911 it has been implementing your latitude and longitude and using that for routing your call to the appropriate center instead of using which tower you connect to with your smartphone. Right, right. And so that's the next step. And that's something that uh, wireless carriers know about very well. We need to get there and that's something we'll continue to push. All right, so I'm raising my hand. I'll help you in any way I can with that. Um, the other thing that I wanted to um, ask you to tease out as I was thinking about it, I did a rough count of the agencies you have listed on here, it, just in terms of more policing. And I'm counting about 21 agencies. And I, I want you to just speak to how unique is Washtenaw County compared to other counties, with the exception of Wayne, in terms of us having essentially three major higher education institutions in our county, uh, one of which is huge. You know, the other is respectfully large. They both take up mass pieces of land and provide mass populations to each city that they are located in. And then you've got Washington Community College. And, you know, you've got these other entities like a prison. Um, so how unique are we overall as a county in terms of those emergency needs that could put us in a crisis situation if, if, if it was a multi sort of instance compared to other counties, you know, because it's not just our population. We, you know, now have college students tiered, you know, a prison system, I'm thinking we're pretty complex. Am I right? Yeah, I would say, um, and just going back to my Homeland Security years where we were really concerned about our protecting our infrastructure, um, there's, a, there's a list that, of course, I can't share with you, but you know what they are, mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. institutions that are absolutely essential. And Washtenaw County has got a lot of those on the list. Mm -hmm. um, and there are others that I won't tell you about that have to do with utilities mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that we're really concerned about. And so, so yes, um, there's, there's a good reason for us to, as public safety personnel, to, to want our communities to support the emergency communications millage in order to help us protect that infrastructure. Um, and, uh, and, and we have, you know, over 120 schools not counting universities, right. just you know, schools and, you know, private and public. And, um, and they all have, um, you know, um, they, they all hold our future in them. Absolutely. And, and so, yeah, for all, for all those reasons, you're, you're right. You know, uh, counties like uh, Washtenaw, um, Ingham County with MSU uh, uh, and, and the state capital. And, you know, there are a handful of counties that have a really rich investment in their infrastructure and in their educational, you know, higher learning in their um, healthcare. You know, we've got, uh, you know, a couple of pretty big healthcare feathers in our cap here. Mm -hmm. um, and so, 
all of those are worth protecting. And you really can't do that on a patchwork of technology that, you know, you're just kicking the can down the road, trying to right. hold it together, you know, until it breaks. Right, right. So uh, when you look at the cost, so the it's estimated $20 a year, if the, the house is valued at 200,000, we, we know house values in Washtenaw County are pretty much far exceeding that. But even if you lived, um, even if you lived in a uh, million dollar home, you're still only paying a hundred dollars a year for for a nine one one system that is coordinated and able to um, assist in getting emergency services out in a in a very timely fashion. So I'm making that plug because I support the renewal, <laughs> but. You, you know, sometimes it, people need to actually hear, okay, what is this going to cost me? And, um, and so I really appreciate you, first of all, using some of my favorite colors in your presentation. <laughs> Second, for sharing that very valuable information um, in the training that we are unique um, we are. in this entire state. We are the county that has this. Um, but also in um, helping to lead the charge for this work because it's crucial. And I think as a transplant to Washtenaw County, I don't take these types of services for granted. No knock on Wayne County, but I come from Wayne County and yeah. in Lucas County before that. And so I at least have some experience in more than one state um, and more than one um, county. And I chose to stay here for 36 years because we have excellent services like um, our, our emergency services. So I appreciate you joining us, Mark. Uh, we'll, we won't make this the last time that you come and talk to us. Okay. Um, and I'll let you close us out if there's anything that you want to add. Well, thank you. Thanks for, uh, for asking me to, to do this. Um, I, um, am obviously pretty invested in it, uh, having, uh, dedicated my career to public safety and, and the, the subtext is, you know, emergency communications. You, you know, I, I realized early on that communications was so important for public safety because we couldn't do what we had to do to help our constituents without that good communications. And I always thought to myself, uh, Every time we got a new gadget or something, oh, good, this is going to help us be, you know, better at our job. Um, and uh, uh, only to uh, having, you know, gradually risen through the ranks and now being faced with budget challenges for those gadgets, and <laughs> and and saying to myself, wow, we've got to do something, we've got to manage this differently, you know, uh, because my county administrator doesn't want me to to call and say, yeah, I need another five hundred, you know, another half million dollars even though you're cutting the budget, right? They don't want to hear that. So, you know, from an administrator standpoint, thank you uh, for those of you that do support this. Uh, it is a big bang, big bang for a little buck. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you very much. Ashley, thank you again for being the behind the scenes tech technologist. Um, and Mark, stay tuned for us. We'll, I'm going to try and make sure we share out like the the access so that you know where this is going to be posted after we're done and you okay. can share it out with people. If people have questions and maybe you don't have time because you are in the middle of a renewal, you can point them to, to our page and they can learn everything that you share with us here. So, so commissioner, just in, your response, in but you know, I forgot to mention. So I am a member of the POC, the project oversight committee for the millage. So there's the uh, representative from, from police, from fire, from EMS, that's me. And we have the county administrator and the, uh, the uh, uh, finance director for the county that all sit on this committee. We watch the money closely. We use it v uh, very appropriately and, and are very cognizant of where the money comes from. So uh, there's no spend thrifty you know, activity on this committee. Uh, we we want to keep this this uh, these finances, these resources uh, sacrosanct. And um, so, if it gets funded again, 
we promise to uh, to do our part in making sure that it's used effectively. And uh, thanks for again for having me on. Absolutely. Thank you very much. And you have a nice, have a great afternoon, rest of your day. And I'm sure I'll see you around. Thanks. All right. Thank you very much. Bye, Commissioner. Bye-bye.